Hi, I'm Katie Peer for PMV In Depth. Thank you for joining us for this series of interviews exploring Pickering's involvement in the Rebellion of 1837. We're traveling back to speak with people who lived those times. Today, we're going to explore the impact of the rebellion on a young farmer in Pickering who chose to take a stand against the government in Upper Canada. Aishel Holly Scott immigrated to Upper Canada when he was nine years old with his family in 1818. He grew up in Pickering, he bought land in Pickering, and he settled down with a wife, Azuba Baker, in Pickering. Next door was his wife's brother, Russell Baker. His sister and her husband, George Wright, lived nearby. And so did his older brother, Colin, and their parents. George, Russell, Colin, and Aishel all followed Peter Matthews to Montgomery's Tavern when the call to rebellion went out in 1837. Colin and Aishel are serving a three-year sentence in Kingston Penitentiary for their part in the rebellion. Thank you, Mr. Scott, for being with us today. You're welcome. <coughs> I understand you're not well, Mr. Scott, and that you've been in the prison hospital since you arrived from the Toronto jail. Yes, ma'am. I'm afraid I'm rather unwell. They say I have consumption likely gotten from the poor conditions in the Toronto jail. I'm so sorry to hear that, Mr. Scott. The conditions were very bad then at the Toronto jail. Please tell us what that was like for you and the other prisoners. Well, there were so many of us uh, into a few open cells. Thousands of us were arrested, you see. We were waiting our day in court. It was cold and damp. We did anything we could to keep our spirits up. Some of us had visitors. My wife was unable to visit, but she sent bread and letters through friends and family who visited. Some of us occupied our time by making small trinket boxes out of wood, like this one here. I made this for my daughter, Mihaela. She's four. Real bright thing she is too. I, on the top I've written a present for Mihaela Scott for, from her father while in prison for high treason in the Toronto jail. July 8th, 1838. On one end, I've written liberty, and on the other, equality. I want her to have something to remember me by, in case, in case I never saw her again. Those words, equality, liberty, many think they're American-like sentiments because they were used in the American Revolution. And there are other people who think that most of the rebels were American-born recent immigrants who came to Upper Canada intent on stirring up the same kind of trouble that had caused the war for independence in the United States. But you weren't the only one to use words like that on your box, were you? It wasn't like that. It was true I was born in New York with my brothers and sisters, but my grandmother had brought my uncles and their families to Upper Canada in 1810. My father had saw what had come of the revolution and he wanted no part of it. We wanted to be part of the British Empire. As soon as we were of age, we, were, we joined with the British militia. We were willing to die for the crown if it came to that. No, those words were about fairness and respect. They were about getting back to where we were five more years ago when the reformers were making change in the colonies. Lots of men inscribed their boxes with similar words. They were about what we'd done and why. It was never about chain replacing the monarch, or so I thought. You and your family became involved in the community of Pickering very quickly. Tell us about what you contributed. My family first came to the township of Cramma, just east of Kingston. It was an area where many United Empire loyalists came and settled. My grandmother and uncles were there. Then we came to Pickering. In 1825, my brother, sister, and I were charter members of the Broham Christian Church in Pickering. In 1828, my father and uncles registered their branding marks with the township council. They intended to be farmers, me as well. My father was elected pathmaster in 1831. 
and in 1837, I was elected to the same position. The year before, I bought my first piece of land in Claremont, Lot 18, Concession 8. I bought it from the Wixons. How well did you know Peter Matthews? Everyone knew Peter. He was a good man. He cared an awful lot about Pickering and about politics and our future. A few men in the Toronto jail inscribed their boxes with a poem in tribute to Lounton Matthews. Their words were tranquil and serene. No terror in their looks were seen. Their steps upon the scaffold strong. A moment's pause. Their lives were gone. <coughs> when those brave men were sentenced to hang, it ran like a ripple through all of us. We thought for sure we'd all suffer the same fate. You believed enough in Peter Matthews to follow him to Montgomery's Tavern. But did you not think hanging was a possible outcome? And did it not deter you? <coughs> I don't know. I suppose we all got caught up in it. The Wixons, the Wilsons, uh, Reverend Barkley, the Baptist preacher, Charles Crocker. We all got caught up in it, I suppose. Uh, Colin, my brother, went to Stouffville with Peter to hear William Lyon Mackenzie speak at a tavern. He, when he came back, he was awfully fired up about the government. He said that William Lyon Mackenzie was offering 300 acres of land to anyone who would come and take back control from the government. I suppose if enough of us stood up together, we couldn't be ignored. And, I, and if we all stood together, we'd be safe with one another. And no, I certainly didn't think I would hang for it. What was it like at Montgomery's Tavern? Tell us what was going on and what happened next. There was much excitement amongst the men. We met at Gallows Hill, not far from the, a tavern. Uh, no, there seemed to be no plan and nobody seemed to be in charge. Eventually, a few of his Pickering men, Charles Crocker, Landon Wirtz, uh, Joseph Matthews, oh, Peter's brother, Colin and myself were told to go with Matthews. A few men were also told to go with Matthews, but I had never met them before. We met at the Don Bridge. A man who I, John Anderson, a man who I never knew was among us, uh, thought himself in charge. I now know he was in tight with Mackenzie. <coughs> Anyways, Matthews got, was upset with Wirtz because he set the bridge on fire. Wirtz was always a little unhinged. Matthew said that that bridge was as important to us as it was to the soldiers. Anderson seemed to disagree. But before we knew it, a house was on fire. We all suspected that was Wirtz as well. Matthews instructed us to put the fire out and we did as best we could. That's when things fell apart. One of our men fired a gun and it hit someone. That's when we fled. We just ran. You seem to be describing chaos, Mr. Scott. Were you aware of orders given to Peter Matthews to burn the Don Bridge? If those were the orders, I was not privy to them. Joseph, his brother, said the same thing. Matthews did not want to burn it down. Uh, all the men were out of control. Uh, Mackenzie had no control. <coughs> he rode around on horseback. Uh, Matthews had no control. And some of the men were into liquor. I'm sure I didn't know how things would turn out, but everything was such a mess, but I didn't expect such a mess. I thought we had something better planned. Mr. Scott, you were arrested with Charles Crocker of Pickering and Peter Matthews. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. We were arrested between Scarborough and Markham. Uh, Crocker and Matthews tried to resist arrest. While they struggled, Peter fired a shot. <coughs> I missed. I, I was tired. We were all out of our depth. If you had it to do all over again, Mr. Scott, what would you do? I would have listened to my father. He didn't want me to get involved. He's been so good to Zuby and our children. My wife, Azuba, had a baby boy while I was imprisoned. Our second son. They can't afford my bail, or Colin's bail. My father has been helping Zuby out on the farm. Uh, I've made such hardship for them. But the warden told me today that I've been pardoned and I can be excused any time now. 
Oh, uh, they're calling me back to my cell, ma'am. Uh, Godspeed. Thank you, Mr. Scott. And we do wish you well. Mr. Scott was released. The surgeon at Kingston Penitentiary recommended it, for it was apparent to him he was never going to improve in health. He died just three weeks after he was released. One hopes that he had the opportunity to hold his wife and children one more time. I'm Katie Peer for PMV In Depth. Thank you for joining us as we explore Pickering's involvement in the Rebellion of 1837. And I hope you'll join us again. Dum, 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 dum. Ba -da -dum, dum.